Hello everyone that actually watches these videos, which is very little of you. Today we'll be looking at the Donkey Kong Game & Watch. Now I have to apologise for the audio and visual parts of this video because, um, well, the camera isn't the best quality and it doesn't actually have an input for microphones. So there might be a little bit of a problem. Besides that, let's get started. So this is the Donkey Kong LCD Game & Watch. So this was before the time of the of the Game Boy, and it was uh, widely known as one of the better game watches out of Nintendo series. Also, playing this is a bit of a problem as well because um I can't really see. I'm only looking through what the camera's seeing at the moment, so there might be a little bit of lag or there might um not be as much precision as you would normally just holding this and looking with your bare eyes, you know. So let's boot her up. Game A. That's like the normal difficulty, I would say. You start off with three lives, including this one that you have right now. The basic controls is you move forward, and there's the jump button on the right-hand side. So it's very basic and primitive, but that's pretty much what you had back then, or you had nothing. Another problem I've had with these um, LCD displays is they're actually like near well impossible to actually record gameplay off of. Now either you have to pull it back so far in order to actually see the sprites, and then you won't actually be able to see close enough to see what's actually going on the screen. But also because this is a dual screen, as you can see, which is a sort of um, a prequel to the Nintendo DS and 3DS's dual screens as well. But it doesn't really have the clamshell design of the uh, Game Boy Advance SP, which is another great system. Here's, there's the other problem. I can only look at one screen at a time, so you can really never see when the barrels are coming down and they're about to kill me. I have to concentrate on Donkey Kong now. There we go, got one of the hooks. Let's get four, three more, and then you should come crashing down. It's pretty much the end of the game, unless you want to continue to get the high score. Another one. Yeah, well, Nintendo did a really good job, I think, in creating such uh, memorable experiences with these game watches because they're so simple, yet they represent the arcade or the NES title really well. Unfortunately, um, Mario crushed his head into the metal too many times, so now that's a game over. Now, obviously, it being called Game and Watch, it has to tell the time. So you can set the time by holding down this button and um, pressing the start, I think. Oh no, that just changes it to PM. You, uh, you can switch around with the time if you want. Uh, I wouldn't use this as a watch nowadays. But the other option is Game B, which I'm pretty sure is just a harder version of uh, Game A. I can't really see many, many differences between the two, but trust me, there is probably one or two. And yeah, also I should note, the score down there, that changes after you jump over a barrel or you take out Donkey Kong. So that's how you tell your friends back in the 80s, oh, I got a 25 score in Donkey Kong. Thank God that the next one that I'm looking at, Donkey Kong Jr. on the Nintendo 3DS, only uses one screen, so I can just continuously look at it. Also, I don't have to deal with the problems of an LCD display, so it's actually easy to see all the sprites and everything. So let's, um, let's jump in. So, I think they did a really good job of almost like emulating or porting over a Game & Watch game to uh, 3DS. As you can see, the um, the sprite work for the thing is pretty good for the time. I'm just dying a few times just so you can see what it's all about. Because I'm not going to say these games are hard. Maybe I'm just like really useless. But um, they are definitely more challenging than some of the other games coming out today. Or just in general. Because um, a lot of people have make the argument that games back then were way more harder, and they were not as forgiving as games today. 
I've got to say that that I somewhat agree with that. Maybe 50-50. So yeah, instead of um, fighting against Donkey Kong, you're meant to save him, like in the uh, arcade and NES title, because you're Donkey Kong Jr., uh, DK's son, which is pretty cool because he's pretty much not in any of Nintendo's other games for the next... Uh, bit. Oh, I don't know. No, he was in uh, Super Mario Kart as a playable character, and they brewed him out. The A button has gone useless today. Yeah, they kicked him out of Mar Super Mario Kart, that series, and replaced him with normal Donkey Kong, which I think is much better. So yeah, much like the um, game watch Donkey Kong, you're meant to uh, get to him four times in the cage and unlock him. But there's also this, you can make this fruit drop on birds and etc. You gain some points by that. So you just grab the key, unlock him. If you do it four times, Donkey Kong gives us a big old smile. Moves on. So yeah, this was a virtual shop exclusive, I think. You couldn't get it on card or like cartridge, which makes sense because it's such a small game, but it's very addictive. And I find myself coming back to it every so often. The cool thing about this one is it has a pause function, so you can come back to it whenever you want and either exit or replay what you were doing before. You can see my top score is 125. Probably garbage, but still. Now, while we're at it, we may as well review just one more Game Watch game. Super Mario Brothers. Now, I'm fortunate enough to have this boxed, but the box is... Looks like it's seen some better days, I guess. I also have the manual for it. So, um, it just shows you some art and instructions about the worlds. Was actually useful the first few times I played this. I really liked the art that they did, but unfortunately it's in um it's not in colour, but that's a sacrifice you have to make while playing Game and Watch. Now it says it's an electronic game and watch game, but personally I thought it just ran off gasoline. Now this one is only one screen, so it's and I'd say it's um a little more comfortable and it's definitely lighter than the Donkey Kong one. And it even has a little kickstand. Alright, so like the NES game, your main goal is to get to the end, destroy Bowser, and save the princess. And unlike this one, it only has one game option, so there's no game B. There's that classic world 1 1 sounds to it. So yeah, you've got the jump button as well, but while you're in midair, you have to navigate. So that's their way of direction jumping, which is actually not too bad. You can get used to it. And also, I'd like to say that I also like the sprite work for Mario. It just seems more lively than the Donkey Kong one. Like it's in much more detail. But the platforms, though, that they're legit just like straight up lines. Also, this D pad does feel a lot like the Switch D pad, except squishy. Like, no, it's not like a connected, uh, sort of Christian cross design as, like, the NES or the, uh, Donkey Kong Game Boy. This one's just really squishy buttons, and I really like that design as well. I don't know if they used this, uh, in many other game watches, because these are the only two that I have. The Donkey Kong one and the Super Mario Bros. one. And as you can see, the distance counter at the top shows how many, uh, sort of blocks you have to go before near the end of the level. I forgot what happens, though. Yeah. Alright. Then there's the princess over there, and then she gets snatched away to the next world. And that pretty much concludes it for the Super Mario Bros. Game & Watch, and also the Donkey Kong one, but I've got to say, I do like this artwork here. I mean, the bullet bill is very determined. You've got the lacquer too. That star is just adorable. And Mario looks um, a little bit squished up. He looks a little bit chubby and short. Not how I imagined it, but oh well. Anyway, like I said, that concludes it for today, so see you guys next time.